You're listening to the Odo Show Podcast, your source for real cleaning talk and tips. Presented by Odoban, the original odor eliminator since 1980. Here are your hosts, Val and Dave. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Hey, everyone. Welcome to the Odo Show. We are live in the uh, third floor studios here in fabulous Warner Robins, Georgia, and we are glad you guys have decided to join us. We've got a great show for you guys this week. We uh, have some mystery, we've got some drama, we've got some intrigue. Uh, Dave, I believe you're thinking of a different show right now. Well, okay, I might not be over the Game of Thrones ending yet. We won't be burning down any innocent villages with a dragon or anything like that, but we do have some really special surprises for you in store. Now, before we jump in, I want to give a special shout out to our Laundry Love and Cleaning Sciences Facebook group that's hanging out with us. What's up, guys? And of course, for our Oda Band, that you guys are our number one fans. You're right here with us. We're glad to have you guys back with us. You know, I've been thinking, Val, people stink. That's kind of rude. No, I didn't mean that. I mean, people smell funny. We are funky, smelly animals, you know? Okay, but give us a break. You know, it is summertime after all. And then here in Georgia, if you're standing outside for more than five minutes, you will be a puddle of sweat. Okay, that's true. But, you know, the sweat's not actually what smells so bad. We uh, we are just walking... Uh, uh, petri dishes. We've got bacteria living all over us, and that's what actually makes the bad smells. God, that sounds disgusting. Well, maybe a little, but but it's natural. I mean, the bacteria are mostly harmless. Uh, they eat the sweat and the skin cells and some of the other things on our bodies, and the things they give off are the chemicals that we think of as, as body smell. Gross. You know what? I want a shower, and I mean immediately. That's probably a good idea. Oh, no, I didn't mean that. I mean, you have to shower on a regular basis, right, to get rid of all that. But, you know, your clothes soak it up, too. So you have to do laundry on a regular basis. You have to wash your clothes, right? That's true. That's true. But you know what? We all know how to wash our clothes. And, you know, I mean, it's just, it's boring. It's not boring. Laundry science is fascinating. I mean, come on, look at these fun facts we got for these folks. Yeah, you know what? That'd be fine if you're going to be on a laundry theme Jeopardy show. But... I'd be the champion on that. Yeah, you probably would. That's a bad thing. You probably would. So let's go back. Let's go way back. How long do you think people have been complaining about doing laundry? (laughs) That's easy. In the beginning of time. Almost. The first evidence of using soap to wash clothing actually goes all the way back to the ancient Egyptians. So you're talking over 5,000 years ago. Wow. You know what? And the thing is, is that there really wasn't a big significant change for a long time. Not until 1851 when the hand crank washing machine came out. Can you imagine having to hand crank your way through all your laundry every day? Yep, I'm imagining it right now and it seems awfully horrible. Yeah. Yeah, but you know what? Humanity was saved with the mighty Thor. Oh, the superhero. I love that guy. I, I prefer the fat Thor personally. No, Dave, that's not what we're talking about. A, that is not the preferred Thor. Am I right, ladies? And B, it wasn't until 1908 that the electric uh, washing machine came out, and it was called the Mighty Thor. Oh, well, okay. So by that point, we had the hardware in place, but we still didn't have the okay. chemistry yet. You know, back in the day of the hand crank, if you were washing laundry, you were using big chunks of soap. This was stuff that was made by rendering animal fat, mixing it with lye, potassium hydroxide to make big chunks of soap. So if you wanted to use it, you had to whip out your trusty pocket knife and carve off a few slices into your washing machine. Oh, my God. I would have a lot of dirty clothes because that does not sound like fun. That's a lot of work. But hey, the good old days, right? (laughs) So the soap worked, but it really wasn't that great. You know, it didn't dissolve in water real well. It was really hard on the clothes because of the excess lye. And so uh, just a few years before the Mighty Thor came out, the Lever Brothers sort of got the first step moving. They designed or uh, developed flake laundry soap that you could put in a box and then sell. So at least you were getting rid of the DIY step there. I'll bet they were thrilled to have that, though. Absolutely. Now, the soap still wasn't that great, but it was almost 50 years until we started to replace soaps with surfactants. Now, surfactants are long-chain molecules that have water-like molecules on one end and oil-like ends on the other. So what these do is they actually help the water grab the soil in your clothes and pull it out in the wash. Now, these things dissolve more easily in water. You can use less of them, and they're just more effective, and they're easier on clothes. It wasn't until the end of World War II where these surfactant-based detergents replaced soaps, and we started to see the laundry detergent that we know of today. I think Mm -hmm. it's time to do a little quiz-o-to-band. 
So we're gonna do some rapid fire questions this time. Uh, how about you toss up the questions and I'll shoot them down. All right, that sounds good. Locked and loaded. All right, first question. What causes a stinky washing machine and how can you get rid of that stink? Okay, so this is a question we get a lot. There's two main causes for bad smells in your washing machine. First off, if you're getting a sour or mildewy smell, that's that probably one. trapped water that's actually starting to mildew. Ooh. Now, this is more common with uh, high efficiency machines. What you want to do is leave those machines open, leave the door open so it can yes. air out. That lets all the water dry. If you don't have the water, you don't have the mildew. Just make sure that you leave the uh, washing room door closed if you have pets or kids. I mean, safety Good idea. first. Good idea. Now, the second one, and again, you see this more with HE machines is buildup. You get a buildup of chemicals around the things. You see it on the door gaskets and down in the tub. Yep. This is things like softening agents, some of the surfactants, skin cells, body oils, all this stuff forms deposits. So you're basically washing your clothes in that. Then. Yeah, if you're not cleaning your washing machine, ah, you are. Oh, no thank you. <laughs> so this stuff allows bacteria to grow in those deposits. And as we've said before on this show, if you've got bacteria, you've got funky you've got smells. smells. So what you want to do is first off, Check your owner's manual. Most of the new machines have cleaning directions. Follow those. If you don't have instructions in the manual, go get yourself some acid bathroom cleaner. Now, this stuff, these deposits are chemically a lot like soap scum. So you want to soak them down with an acid bathroom cleaner. That's the low pH stuff that's designed to get rid of soap scum. Let it sit for a little while. Give it a little scrub. These deposits can be pretty tough. And then rinse it really well. As a matter of fact, if you use it inside your washing machine, you want to do a full cycle with no clothes to actually just rinse all that out. That's cool. All right. Second one. What is the best way to remove stains on clothes? I love this question. Okay. So the best thing you can do for a stain is know your stain. Know what made it because what made it is going to help you target how to get it out. First off, if you've got food stains, you want to look at enzyme products. Things like alkalase for proteins or lipolase for food oils. Okay. You got notes on that? Uh, yeah, I might need to write those down. <laughs> <laughs> if you've got ink stains, you're going to look to something that's a solvent. A lot of times rubbing alcohol is a good place to start as a spot cleaner for that. Now, if you've got petrochemical stains, I mean like real grease stains, grease from wheel bearings or change or, you know, shop water. Water repellent grease. Yeah, that stuff repels water. So you're going to want to start with a real degreaser as a spot cleaner before it goes in the actual laundry. And last, we've got tannin stains. Now, tannins are things in coffee, in tea, and in red wine that give it the color. So if you've got these kind of stains, you want to look for something that's using active hydrogen peroxide. Those peroxides break down the molecules that actually have the color. And so if you've got no color molecules, you've got no stain. That's why you see hydrogen peroxide <coughs> in the toothpaste. That's it. Queens, it queens the stains off your okay, teeth. Okay, so last but not least, should I use fabric softeners? Give me the pros and cons on that. All right, fabric softeners. Pros for this, if you have uh, hard water especially, your clothes probably come out a little scratchy feeling. Those softeners, hence the catchy name, make your fabric feel softer. Also, if you live in a dry climate and you like long flowing skirts or, or really thin dress pants, you get static cling issues. They tend to stick to you, right? Well, the softeners actually uh, cut out the static cling on those clothes. So that can be a real benefit. And last, if you're like Val here and you leave stuff stacked up for three weeks at a time, it can smell really nice when you pull it out of those stacks, pull it out of the closet it because does. of the fragrances and all that the softeners keep on the clothes. Yeah, my daughter loves that. She loves, yeah. like, all the scents. She will load those things in. Now let's talk about the cons. Cons on this is, first off, like we mentioned, deposits in your washing machine and your dryer. So even if you're just using fabric sheets, those softener compounds eventually get back into your washing machine, too. And they can actually build up in your dryer to the point of being a fire hazard in yes. extreme cases. yes something to think about. Now, if you've got real high performance workout fabrics that are designed to wick sweat and pull it away from your body, as soon as you use a fabric softener, it blocks all that moisture transfer. You've just done away with any wicking properties on those expensive garments. Wow, you don't even think about those kind of things. Not often. Now, the last thing is if you put softeners on something and you pull it out of the closet two weeks later, it has a really strong fragrance smell. Because, of course, some people like Val's daughter want that, and some people don't. It can be a con, depending on what you want. True. Very cool. All right. All right. So out of bullets. I'm out of shells for that one. <laughs> we hope you guys have had a good time hanging out with we us. We know we did. And we know we had a good time. <laughs> Until next time, clean it like you mean it, and make, make life, life fresh. fresh. Thanks for listening to The Odo Show, presented by Odo Band. If you've enjoyed this episode, please leave us a review and subscribe so you'll never miss an episode. Until next time, make life fresh.